Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2015 Chevrolet City Express and we're going to be taking a look at and I'm going to show you how to install the eTrailer Class 3 2-inch hitch receiver. Adding a hitch receiver to your City Express is going to give you a lot of options. It's going to allow you to carry bike racks, cargo carriers, and maybe even tow a small trailer. This hitch is going to be rated for 525 pounds of tongue weight and 3,500 pounds of max gross trailer weight if you plan on towing a trailer. You do want to be sure to check in your owner's manual to see what your submodel is able to tow. This hitch is going to feature a matte black powder coat finish that's going to help to resist rust and corrosion. It'll feature uh, some safety chain loops. They are a little bit smaller from what we're used to seeing here, but they still are going to fit your standard S hooks and your um, many, many other style hooks. The hitch will also have a 5 8 inch hitchman hole. This hitch does not come with a pin and clip, but it will fit your standard 5 8 inch hitchman. So if you have one already, you can use that, or many of our accessories will come with one. Now you'll notice the hitch does stick out past our uh, bumper a little bit. It really is just the collar, so it's not far enough to be able to hitch your shin on it um, or your leg. If you're working out of the back of your van, a lot of people will use these for work, so that is a nice feature. If you have a ball mount in there, you will want to be careful though, because that will stick out quite a bit further. From the center of our hitchman hole to the outermost part of our bumper is going to be about an inch and a half. So that'll keep that in mind if you're looking for any accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. With this hitch, typically if they're past the bumper, uh, you should have no problems with any of those bike racks or cargo carriers folding up to the back of your car. From the ground to the top inside of the receiver tube is going to be about 12 inches. That's about the height that we recommend looking for accessories with a rise in the shank. Um, this particular owner of this one is going to use it to tow a small trailer for his irrigation business, so it's going to work out great for him. Now as far as the insulation goes, it's not too bad of an insulation. You should be able to get it done in a couple of hours. Um, really all it involves is uh, trimming a couple of tabs on the bumper itself and lowering the spare tire and lowering the exhaust. There are going to be two ways to run the hardware through the frame. One way is going to involve drilling out a hole to about 7 eighths of an inch and another way is going to be running it a little bit further to a larger access hole in the back of the frame. So it's, it's, it may take you longer to run the hardware, but it's also going to take you a little bit to draw out those holes. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and take it inside and show you how we did it. To begin our insulation, we need to start by removing our spare tire. We will be reinstalling it. It's just going to give us more room to be able to get the hitch up into place. You'll have a 7 8 inch bolt on the back side right near your door latch and this is going to lower down a hook so we can uh, remove it off this cage holding the spare tire on. I'll lift it up, lower it down and grab our spare tire and pull it out of the way. Next we're going to be lowering our exhaust to make more room uh, to get our hitch in place, we'll take a cam buckle strap, and if you only have a ratchet strap, you can use that too. Just don't crank down on it too hard. We just hook it from one hole to another, just to provide support when we use a uh, crowbar to pop this exhaust hanger off. We typically will use a little bit of soapy water, and that helps it to come off real easy. Once that's off, and we'll loosen the cam buckle strap and pull our exhaust down a little bit. Now we need to take a flathead screwdriver and remove two push pin fasteners from underneath. They're holding these little tabs on. We removed the driver side already, but for the passenger side, you take a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool if you have one. Um, push it under the middle portion of it. These are a little stuck. There we go. Pry it out and then you'll want to pry out the base. Set these to the side. We're going to take this tab and fold it down so that we can have a better look at it. Um, in your instructions, it's going to mark out. It is a really small picture, but this is what it's trying to show. Uh, we'll mark this up to the crease line and then go straight across because our access hole for a bolt is going to be underneath here and we're going to need to use that in order to 
attach our hitch. So we'll take some um, snips. We're just using a pair of tin snips here and we'll cut this plastic up to the seam and then cut the seam across. So we just noticed we raised our hitch up in place just temporarily. Um, we noticed that this bracket is not mentioned in the instructions, but we will have to re remove it. It is just a, a wiring support bracket, it looks like. So we'll take this off. We'll also, underneath that bracket we just took off, we'll have a bolt head that we'll have to cut off. Next, we're going to be fish wiring our hardware through our frame. Now the three holes on each side that you're going to be using for your hardware are going to be this hole here, which is going to be underneath this plastic tab that we just pulled down, this hole here, and this hole. Now there's two different ways you can run your hardware. One way is that you can widen this hole to 7 eighths of an inch and run your hardware up inside these two holes, down and out, or you can take your fish wires and run them from this hole over top of this shackle for your leaf spring. You have to go over top because underneath is too small for the head of the carriage bolt to fit. Uh, we're gonna do this method because we already did the passenger side and it worked out great. So we'll start with our fish wire. I like, like to put a little bit of a bend in it. And then we'll start with our furthermost bolt and you're usually pretty safe if you follow the top of the frame and push it over top of our shackle mount. There we go. You can also use a magnet if you have one long enough to fit back in there. Hold on to these two ends. Um, I typically will put a bend in it like this so that it can't go back up inside the hole. Then we'll take a spacer block, slide it on, and then thread on our carriage bolt. We'll take this, push the carriage bolt up through the hole first. Then you'll want to pull, wiggle the hardware until it comes out of the hole. We'll do that same thing for this hole, run it up and over. And then this hole is going to be fairly easy because we just have to go from here to here. There we go. Now we're ready to raise our hitch up into position. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our hitch in place. The fish wire is gonna help us to get our bolts aligned. That's why we like to leave them on. We can take this, slide our fish wires in, and we'll have to slide it over top of our driver's side frame rail, or our springs first, and then come back over our passenger side. So we'll raise it up, make sure our bolts come down through. We do have a wire that's gonna interfere here, so we'll take a trim panel tool, move it out of the way, and this is gonna allow us to get that bolt running. Pull that fish wire off, and then thread on one of our flange nuts. Now we're having a little bit of interference with some sealant up here, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a 19 millimeter socket, draw the hitch up a little bit so that we can get our hardware um, on our bolts. With all our flange nuts in place, we can tighten them all down and come back with a torque wrench and torque it to the specifications and the instructions. So after torquing everything down, uh, we went to put the plastic support brackets back up and we tried trimming a little bit more, but with this hitch, it's just not gonna line up right. So uh, we're going to trim the rest of this tab off. And, but then on the passenger side, 
we ended up having to trim a little bit of this right here in order to fit it with the hitch. So we pop that back up in place and uh, we're all good to go. Now we're ready to put our exhaust back on, put our spare tire back in the cage and raise it back up and we're ready to use our hitch. Well guys, hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the e-trailer class three two inch hitch receiver is right for your 2015 Chevrolet City Express.